Well, hello, everybody. Welcome back to Worship God, the Gospel Coalition Canada podcast, equipping worshipers and worship leaders to love Jesus and to serve Him and serve the church. Thanks for being with us today. If you are a regular viewer or listener, uh, thank you for your support. And if you're new to this podcast, we want to welcome you. Maybe this is your first time here. Hope you enjoy it. We have a Facebook page, so uh, go and make sure that you like that. We post episodes and clips and questions there. My name is Jody Cross. I am the lead pastor at South Shore Bible Church in Barrie, Ontario, Canada. And today I am joined by Pat Sabell. Pat is the worship pastor at Midtown Church in Vancouver. And also I'm joined by Rob Brockman, the associate pastor at Cornerstone Baptist Church in Ontario. Hey, guys. Hey, hey Jody. Good to see you yet again. And Pat and I are wearing plaid. So thanks for getting the memo on that one. <laughs> Rob, next time wear some plaid. It is, it is winter out here, so uh, we're at least getting there. Yeah, but I'm matching Paul. So I'm okay. Uh, all right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> well, let's introduce our brother. Uh, today, we are very excited to be joined by Paul Balash. He is a worship ministry veteran, having served the Lord in this capacity for more than 30 years. He's a prolific songwriter. Most likely, you have sung one or many of his songs, like Open the Eyes of My Heart or Your Name or Hosanna, uh, Praises Rising. And uh, most recently, a song that I've come to know and love that I actually listened to on repeat about eight times when I first heard it, great song, Behold Him. Um, so Paul is in New York City. He uh, has been married to Rita for 34 years, and they have three kids and three and a half grandchildren. So that's fantastic. Paul is a humble man. He's a gifted man, and he has uh, been called to serve the church. He's done that faithfully. Paul, welcome to this podcast. Thank you, Jody. Paul, when I think of you being in New York City, I kind of feel like you're on the 90th floor of some apartment building. Are you like up high on the world today? Or are you like closer to the ground? The 13th floor. 13th. Ooh. That's that's high enough. That's high enough. Up. High yeah. enough to hurt yourself if you uh, <laughs> fell off the terrace. <laughs> yeah, um, didn't didn't you do some vocal warm-ups and stairwells or something at one point? I think I remember you seeing doing that during yes. COVID. Man, you're good. Yeah, yeah. There's a uh, if you walk up the stairwell. Um, to the elevator shaft room where nobody goes. That's where I go practice ministry to the Lord or do my vocal warm ups. It just kind of smells like oil and grease. And there's mm. these, you know, the, the two elevator shafts are going and, but it's just a quiet private place. And that's, that's hard to find in New York. Well, wow. so uh, again, it's not quiet, but it's private. And I've, I've learned to just get used to that noise and the smell. And I'll open up one of the industrial windows there just to, get some fresh air and I've had some sweet times with mm. the Lord there mm. and uh, just go up there with my guitar. So I don't annoy my neighbors or we're just in a one bedroom apartment. So it just, mm. um, that's cool. You know, that'd be cool. Some guys say I was, I was really depressed and I walked into the stairwell and I hear this angelic sound and I came to know Jesus. So who knows <laughs> how God will use your, your time. Right. Well, Paul, I was thinking about when you and I first met each other back in uh, almost 20 years ago. It was 2004 in New Jersey at Old Bridge. Mm -hmm. And then since then, our paths have crossed in various places. And uh, uh, kind of most recently, you were up in Aurelia, Ontario, and then in Barrie, Ontario, where I live, doing some Christmas concerts. And those are fabulous. So that uh, we're, we're so thankful you've traveled all over the place. And thanks for taking the time to be with us today, to join us. And Today, what we're really wanting to do is to hear your story and um, to hear your journey and to hear your heart. So we're looking forward to it. Well, thank you for that. You know, it is quite interesting when, I don't know if you feel the same way, but um, when, when someone says, tell me your story, there's a part of me maybe growing up in a working class, blue collar community. It's kind of like, all right, enough for you. Don't talk about yourself. We had enough. You know, it's a little bit of that in my head. Um, you feel like, okay, I get like two minutes to talk about my story, but then it's like, let's move on. Mm -hmm. It's funny, even at this age. But I will say I've had to push back against that intentionally because scripture says in Revelation, they overcame by the blood of the lamb mm -hmm. and the word of their testimony. And I may be taking that out of context, but that has helped me to put more value on my testimony, my story. Everyone has a testimony or a story. Mm -hmm. Um, um, hopefully it involves meeting Jesus, right? So, um, so I'll start at the beginning, born just outside of Philadelphia, right across the bridge, Camden, New Jersey, a working class city. And um, I was raised in a sincere Catholic home. Um, 
parents would, you know, go to the church basement on a Saturday night dancing, and then they'd go to church on Sunday morning. And uh, we'd have at home mass uh, masses and um, remember as a kid, you know, putting on a robe and getting Ritz crackers and, you know, like reciting the, the, the liturgy and um, eventually becoming an altar boy and of course Catholic school, my experience. So, you know, it wasn't bad. It was a good sort of, uh, I'm, I'm thankful that in general, it was uh, quite a, uh, this will date me quite a leave it to beaver kind of growing up experience, you know, just a small working class town. A lot of, a lot of your life revolved around the church and um, definitely grew up at least with a, an appreciation for God and the mystery of God and a reverence for God, a fear of the Lord, if you will. Um, uh, but uh, not, not a uh, relationship, not really a heart connection. And so in high school, um, started playing guitar, uh, started seeing more bands. I got into school and just started, you know, it was the late 70s. So it was kind of smoking pot and all that was just such uh, ubiquitous, you know, kind of at the time. And, and just of the people I hung out with were like musician guys who were smoking pot and they were being in bands and all that. And that seemed cool at the time. And met eventually so we'd practice in our basement just a bunch of rock bands my parents with a, a six foot ceiling basement and mm. uh men in the house i'm sure would shake you know just doing <laughs> led zeppelin and kansas and uh you name it all the all the sort of classic bands of the 70s um b3 oregon marshall amp you know mm. full drum <laughs> kit wow i mean that's why I'm definitely going to be losing my hearing <laughs> um if I haven't already, so my, my adult children tell me I may have already. What? Mm. Um, so anyway, yeah, long story short, I thought, man, I graduated high school. I was in a band. These guys were much older than me. They were a killer band. I got the lead guitar role. We had a gig at a, at a club at the Jersey Shore from May until the end of August. Man, it's like six nights a week from 10 o'clock till four in the morning. That's how late this club was open. So, but man, halfway through that year, in one hand, it was like everything I thought it would be. I mean, it was my PA, all my paper route money as a, as a kid, <laughs> man, all that hustle. That sort of like Jersey hustle. I, I put it into buying like a Soundcraft mixing board and all the microphones and the PA system. But these guys were into, they, they were into some hard drugs, even though they were super talented. But um, I was super disillusioned. And really um, sad. And by the end of that summer, man, it was like, uh, mm. man, what's it all about? So I literally, the only thing I knew was on a Sunday morning, I would just make it to like the 12 o'clock mass and I'd hang out on the back pew. And I just, it's, uh, and I just feel like the Lord heard my heart, just my searching heart. And um, because it wasn't long after that, I started running into some people that like read the Bible and they talked about Jesus, like he was real. Mm. And uh, that was uh, just all that was just, I was so hungry for that. And I saw something in their, in their eyes, in their life that really was appealing. And so not too long after that, I went to some weekend conference event and I brought my older brother with me and actually a, another friend of mine and uh, who had also been into that crazy lifestyle and um, man, they were giving their testimonies. People were going up there, giving these amazing testimonies. There was a band playing. I heard the gospel just laid out. And uh, man, I just remember me and my older brother, who's like always been a hero of mine. And this friend of mine, we went up and just gave our hearts to Jesus mm. and asked Jesus into our heart and, you know, prayed the sinner's prayer. And it just was radically changed mm -hmm. um came back from that weekend just like completely changed i could give you a couple yeah um give you a few examples but i just lost all desire for whatever any kind of a drug or this or that um a girl i was kind of with at the time was like yeah um probably really shouldn't be together anyway <laughs> just a lot of changes happened and it wasn't because somebody told me to it was just like from the inside out and right mm -hmm. 
And I remember those innocent days of like, yeah, but, but Jesus, like Jesus, he's real. Like, no, no, really like Jesus. I, I mean, I know like church and all that, but no, for real, like, and um, the beauty of that hmm. innocent conversion, you know, when I look back is, uh, so I kind of thought I'd have to give up music altogether. And um, thankfully within a few months, I found this AM radio station in Philadelphia that played this music and it was pretty cool music and it was about God and people like Mylon Lefevre and uh, Kelly Willard and Lenny LeBlanc and Twilight Paris. I was like, who are the, who are these people? <laughs> but it was fascinating. And it really gave me hope that, well, maybe you don't have to stop playing music. Maybe there's a way to sort of yeah. do this. What is this? This is amazing. So, um, not long after that, probably within a year or two, I thought, well, if I'm going to do this, seems like a lot of these people are in Southern California. So, and I want to go to a music school, not a college, but there was a lot of commercial music schools like GIT, MIT, Musician Institute, mm. Technology. I went to the Grove School of Music, which was like a one year kind of commercial music school, like just how to, how to be a working musician. So it kind of took a lot of that self-taught stuff and learned theory and harmony and arranging and all that it was good it was really good and that was a god there's all these little I, i'm i'm editing myself to keep this <laughs> it's already long but maybe i'll say this have you ever heard of michael omardian do you know that name michael mm -hmm. yeah. he, he was a producer for christopher cross back in the day and oh my gosh if you if you google michael omardian steely dan he played with them and anyway the first sunday i'm in california i drive five days in this little 240 Dotson from New Jersey to California. And I go to Jack Hayford's church. Do you remember Jack Hayford? Mm, yeah. yeah. And I go into this church, 2000 people. I'm just a single guy in the middle of all these people. And after the worship, he says, well, let's give each one another a greeting. And, so, and I shake this person's hand. And she says, this lady, hi, I'm Stormy. This is my husband, Michael. Oh, man. <laughs> and, uh, I said, oh, hi, I'm Paul. And it's like this 30-second exchange. He goes, oh, what are you doing? I was like, actually, I just got here two days ago, and I was going to go sign up for a music school at GIT. And he goes, ah, oh, yeah, you, you ought to check out uh, Grove School of Music. It's a little bit more legit. And I'm like, oh, okay. All right, well, hey, well, thanks. Nice meeting you guys. That's it. So it wasn't, it wasn't until like a few months later, I'm in a Christian bookstore, and you see all these books like Stormy Omardian on prayer. Mm -hmm. Stormy Omardi and all this I'm like, hey, that's that lady. And then, of course, her husband Michael was a big time producer. So, I'm just that's the hand of God. Within within two weeks, I just went to some church like uh, potluck dinner thing, and I met Kelly Willard. I didn't even know. Just this guy named he guy came up. He had a, a thing, uh, just a name tag. It said Dan. Oh, hi Dan. How you doing? I'm what a nice guy. We're talking for 20 minutes. Then this girl, Kelly, comes over. Oh, this is my wife, Kelly. Oh, you're Kelly Willard. Oh, man, I've heard you on the radio in Philadelphia. That's crazy. Nice to meet you. Blah, blah, blah. Next thing you know, they're saying, hey, come on down to our place, you know, when you can on weekends or um, when, you, when you're able to. So I started going down there on weekends. And this is relevant because if there is a principle here for anyone listening, um, that's involved in ministry. What I didn't realize it at the time, but just being around someone who was married, who was in ministry, they had small children. And when I would go to their house, I just sort of looked around for stuff to do. Like, uh, hey, you guys got a lawnmower? You want me to mow the lawn? You guys, it seems like it's getting long. Would that help? Oh, yeah, all right, cool. Or after a dinner, I'd be like, you know, do washing their dishes, putting them away, just trying to be a help. Hey, you know, holding like one of their babies while they're taking care of some other situation, you know? And, um, you know, then, then she would say, hey, I'm, I'm recording something for a, a, a praise app for Maranatha Music or Vineyard, you know, if you want to come with me and come hang out. Oh, amazing. Yeah, sure. So hang out in a studio while Kelly would sing this song for like a Vineyard or Maranatha. And you'd kind of hear it, you know, six months later, like, hey, how about that? So just to be around a couple and a family that was involved in ministry. Uh, thank God they were just, to me, they were a, a healthy, hmm. as, as I've lived more life, I realized how fortunate I was to meet someone like them. And then eventually, then they moved to Muscle Shoals, Alabama. I helped them move. And the second person I got to know was 
Lenny LeBlanc. Mm. And Lenny, Le Lenny and Kelly, just so um, unpretentious, um, not trying to be the big deal, just sincere, authentic worshipers. Um, not perfect, but, you know, just really uh, authentic and sincere. And I'm uh, so grateful for them, how the Lord used them to encourage me and uh, pull things out of me that I, I never saw. Um, mm -hmm. Real quick, went back to uh, eventually made it back to Jersey. This whole time I'm talking to this girl, Rita, who had gotten saved around the same time I did. And I knew her from before. So we're like communicating by phone occasionally, not, not even it was platonic, um, but there was just a friendship there. And she would, she would write these Christian like little ditties on a, a nylon string guitar, open tuning, and she would sing into a cassette recorder and then she'd send me this cassette. So I would play it for Lenny. I'd played for Kelly and they were like, this is, a, this is so good. So the first song that Kelly ever, I mean, that we ever had recorded was a song Rita wrote called I will celebrate. And it was just from this little cassette. There she is at, in her, her house. Just, you know, I will celebrate, sing unto the Lord, mm -hmm. sing to the Lord, new song. So again, just innocent days of just trying to press into God, hanging with people that were pursuing the Lord. Um, maybe if there's another principle to pull out of that, it's like, man, get around people. We all need to be around people that are pursuing God. Mm. Um, in an authentic way and also yeah and you're, you're going to come across some some crazies and some weirdos and all you know just don't let that hang you up don't, don't let that mess you up just kind of you know people are people mm. and um everybody's at a different stage right so sometimes you'll meet someone that maybe they're in like the second grade of their walk in the lord and they're acting like a second grader mm. if you will you know, you can't expect them to act like an adult, a full mature, uh, um, per se. So anyhow, yeah, just don't be distracted by uh, some of the stuff you'll, you come across. Keep your eyes on the Lord. Stay around people that seem kind of healthy in their walk with the Lord. Mm -hmm. And that will affect your walk with him. So long story short, uh, we went down, then Kelly moved to Texas to work with melody green at last day's ministries she kept saying you guys should come down here you got you and paul should come down here oh so we got married rita and i but i went back to jersey we got married i was just going to hang out there and um, build a life and they kept saying you guys should come down and we'll tour and we'll do this and we'll do that you can play guitar and rita will sing and we're like all right great so we loaded up our ford escort and we went down there and uh course that didn't go over real big with her father like a philadelphia business guy truck driver jeez paul what kind of life is that she's <laughs> going around the country singing christian music like a bunch of gypsies <laughs> oh man <laughs> and I'm like i i know pop i know what's it called <laughs> last days ministries for crying out loud what is that <laughs> we're like it's a like tech it's com like a commune like that david <laughs> caress thing geez oh God, what are you doing here i'm like oh, i know man. pop listen trust me you know <laughs> so we moved down there we lived at last day's ministries and one of the little trailers there um little mobile home well it was a motor home at first melody's motor old motor home and then oh a mobile home opened up and we just hung there and we learned to serve and again instead of touring and all that really what happened is kelly and dan would do these fly dates ministry dates and Rita and I would stay home. We'd watch their kids and I'd mow their three acres, mow the lawn, and just work on the ranch. We'd have our meals in common at Last Day's Ministries. Melody was writing the book, No Compromise. And I just have images of her walking past our trailer to Dan and Kelly's with like a, just reams because she was writing it by hand. You know, this was like hmm. kind of just, it sounds so old for me to say this, but like the, the, the first little Apple computer Hmm. just come out like that cool little thing he put the square disc in you know so mm -hmm. melody was writing this book no compromise by hand and anyhow yeah so little did we know bottom line real fast and fast forward hanging out there the local church the community church there's a big youth with a mission ywam based there there is a uh, uh 
oh gosh, world challenge, which is David Wilkerson, you know, the cross and the switchblade, David Wilkerson, well, his world headquarters was right there in Lindale, this little town. David was the first one there. He went down, bought like 2000 acres because it was so cheap. Hmm. And then he, he talked Keith Green into coming out. And so that was the last days. They had a couple hundred acres, youth with a mission, um, and, a, and other, some other ministries that you may not have heard of, but the point being, we all met on Sunday mornings at this sort of informal gathering. It was just like uh, the worship. It was kind of started by Keith Green and and actually Leonard Ravenhill would show up and preach sometimes. You ever heard of Leonard Ravenhill? By mm-hmm. So anyhow, I just started playing guitar in this band. Band. I mean, sometimes it was just the pastor like leading worship and I play guitar. There was a keyboard player in a from a group called Harvest, and uh, they were he was great. So we became dear friends, and after a few months, the pastor one time put me on the spot and said, Paul, why not, after a sermon, Paul, why don't you come lead us in a few songs? We're just going to have a time of prayer, those that need prayer, uh, you know, blah, blah, blah. That, it was so casual for him, but for me, I was freaking out. <laughs> because up till that time, I was really just a guitar player for... Yeah this person for that person, maybe a background vocal here and there, but like the lead, that wasn't something I really did. And um, I guess it wasn't terrible, but yeah, you know, second chapter of acts like Matthew Ward, there's Dallas home. There's like, I mean, th- these were like the casting crowns of the day mm-hmm. yep. or, you know, the, the switch foot of the day or whatever. Mm-hmm. They were, you know, just some names, if you will, but they were, you know, afterwards they were encouraging, but it was just a, an odd place, uh, but a wonderfully odd place in that um, it was not super structured. And I had the opportunity to make a lot of mistakes. Mm. Um, that's such a key. Again, another thing, if you want to pull that out, anybody listening, if you're a senior pastor and you feel like you've found somebody in their early 20s or something, you like set them up for success and give them room to like, whoops, whoops, I didn't quite make that transition right. Or uh, that was like kind of an awkward opening or that was that modulation didn't quite work. You know, just it, that's the only way you're going to grow is you're going to make mistakes. So I'm just thankful, thankful that um, for the most part, the environment was um, supportive. Mm -hmm. And um, so little did we know we'd, lived there 26 years so in that same church went through three pastors uh, went through a couple church splits um it's you know non-denominational in that you've got people coming to these like mercy ship schools or last days or ywam their background is every possible background you can think of you know every denomination so it was a good sort of melting pot of denominations generations and um, I just learned a lot, you know, I, I learned to respect kind of where people are at, not trying to make people do something or behave a certain way or um, worship or a certain way, but just to sort of give people room and some freedom to express their worship, but to continue to encourage and challenge them to, to biblical worship. So Psalm 95 oftentimes be like, all right, guys, let's, let's look at this. Let us sing for joy to the Lord. Okay, well, we're going to do that. Verse 2, let us shout aloud to the wreck of our salvation. Maybe we'll do that today. Maybe we won't. But just know that that's okay. We, sometimes we just lift a shout. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, let us come before him with thanksgiving and extol him with music and song. That's why we're doing this. See, this, that's why we do music, all right? And let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker. Maybe this morning there'll be a time, or maybe this month there'll be a moment where you feel led to just get on a knee or get on both knees if you're able to. And uh, I may invite you to do that at times. Um, but if you can't, then that's fine. But we we want to express we want to explore every biblical option we have in our worship to God. Mm-hmm. And that became sort of our banner, our, our paradigm or whatever. Our, our motto is we want to explore every biblical option that there is. Now, we're not going to make you do anything, but we are going to 
look at that scripture, get it into our eyes, into the heart. And okay, if you feel free to lift a hand, let's just go ahead and do that together. Lord, we just lift our hand to you. We reach out to you this morning, you know, that kind of thing. Or, hey, if you feel free to, let's put our hands together and applaud the Lord. Let's just see what that feels like. And those, I remember the early years, just Hmm. almost like we were learning together. And I would just, I'd give people an out. Maybe, you know, maybe for some people, you disagree with that. But I just want, hey, if you feel free, that was like, you can steal that from me. I'd say, hey, if you feel free to just go ahead and let's, let's, let's do what the Bible says and let's applaud the Lord. Let's clap our hands. Let's applaud him. You know, and then I may give a word, a word picture. Like, you know, if somebody um, we respect walked in here, if uh, I don't know, Paul McCartney of the Beatles, you know, all of a sudden was going to visit our church this morning, we would probably out of respect. Hey, Paul McCartney. Hey, wow. Great. Or whoever, fill in the blank, whoever, someone that you may respect. We're talking about Lord of Lords, King of Kings, Creator, Savior. Let, let's, let's stand and let's applaud him. He is worthy. Let's, do, let's try that together. Mm. So that would be another thing I would say. So, hey, let's try that together. These are just little things to sort of get folks without manipulating, not trying to uh, passive aggressive, but just with a healthy respect, just trying to like, Hey, let, let's lean in a little bit more. Let, let's we've been into the water up to our ankles. Let's take a few steps out up to our knees. Oh, that was great. Now maybe next week we'll go up to our waist, maybe next month, you know, we'll just, let's just keep going deeper into who God is hmm. and our expression of, of how we worship him. Hmm. Wow. I'm just, I want to apologize talking so much here but <laughs> no problem man. Asked... <laughs> paul you and i and pat are uh, pretty much the same vintage so as you're telling your story i am oh man reliving those days too uh you know i was kind of in my 20s the same time you were and yeah and all those people you talked about were people i listened to um and uh, such a freshness and such a just a, a move of god in such simple and powerful ways mm. so that's pretty exciting yeah. thank you for for that story yeah, something that I, I noticed, Paul, about your story is there's a deep heritage and deep heritage of pastoral ministry behind you as a songwriter and as a, you're writing songs for the church. And you can tell that in your music. There is a sense in which, you, yeah, you've got your eyes on the congregate. It's like almost like I picture you writing and you're thinking about the congregation and all these songs that you're writing. And, um, and I'm wondering, like, and that seems to, that, that bled into this after how many, 26 years of being a worship pastor at that church? How long were you? Yeah, about 26. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. led, led you now into this. It's like you didn't stop there. You kind of shifted towards, you know, discipleship and, and you know, kind of being the pastor to worship pastors. And you've recorded DVDs and videos and all this stuff. You've never stopped pastoring. I'm I'm wondering like what led you become to to become so focused on leadership development even after stopping you know working officially in yeah. a church what what why why is that in your DNA Um good question Um I guess you know we stayed at the church because we felt like these are the people we've chosen to do life with hmm. So this is our spiritual family and that's how I looked at the local church was this is not a job, a position, a career. I mean, if I told you what I, what I got paid after 25 years, you'd be shocked. But the Lord provided through other means. You know, this was kind of a YWAM church. And uh, half of our <laughs> congregation, they were living on support pretty much, you know, because they were this couple's going off to this country to, for six months to do itinerant or this ministry or that. It was very missions minded. But so because of that, I think there was that feeling of being like an aunt or an uncle, you mm -hmm. know, of, of some of the younger believers. And then there was, it was the, being multi-generational. There was older men and women who we respected, who we were gleaning from as it should be as a, as a, as a healthy local church should be that multi-generational experience where there are grandparents, there's parents, there's single people, children, uh, it's family. Uh, you, you go through tragedies with people. You cry with people. You, you go to hospitals. 
and you you buy bedsides and you sing a few songs and you pray and you ask in faith and you know and uh yeah and then there's other times you rejoice with people having babies or getting married or you know just victories in people's lives and celebrating those things and mm. um and funerals and uh just life, man, doing life. Yeah. So it was never in my mind like a leadership thing. So, and I guess so. And as I would be, as I was asked to do some itinerant things, as in like started with YWAM, hey, can you come? We're doing a school of worship. Will you come and give guitar lessons and do this? And do that? Yeah, yeah, sure. Like I was just learning myself. Mm -hmm. um, but it started to become this, which years later I realized that scripture where Paul says to Timothy, hey, these things that I've taught you, I've instructed, I want you to turn around and entrust those things to other faithful men and women. Mm -hmm. That's a paraphrase, but uh, just that, that spirit of taking what you've learned and then turning and find who, whosoever, like, hey, here's some things I've learned. Hey, here's some mistakes I've made. Why don't you try this? Hey, and uh, then that evolved into, hey, why don't we record some of this with a video camera and maybe talk about you know, how not to do it and then demonstrate how to do it and just kind of say, hey, why don't you guys try that with your team and see if that makes sense. And mm. that sort of began over time, sort of that um, the whole DVD or even before that VHS <laughs> the video, but just the idea of like, maybe this will help someone, you know, that was really the, let's just do this. Let's record this and maybe whosoever. Um, I do remember you had this one because I your your DVDs were my bread and butter. Like I didn't have a worship pastor, and so I learned from your DVDs, and I've studied those often. And I remember, and it just happened in this moment. You were talking about these people, and in the in the video, you get emotional, and you're just like, oh, when you just think about your people and you think about what they're going through, it changes the way you build your set list. And I remember that sticking out to me, and I and I was wondering also about that pastoral tenderness that you have when you when you like, how do you how would you encourage people to grow in that pastoral tenderness that's led you to care for people and disciple people? How would you, how do you foster that? Like, cause I think a lot of worship guys just get annoyed at their people because they're not singing loud enough or they're not clapping or whatever. Yeah. How do you facilitate that? Um, I mean, I, I'm not trying to be Mr. Spiritual. I'm, I'm just telling you things. Sure. I've had many times where I would be annoyed at, in, at them, you know, in general. Like, hey, they're not singing enough. They're not doing enough of this. You know, I'm wanting something from them. But one of the things we would do these old fashioned church directories. You remember those like once a year, these like terrible pictures of your family. Of, hey, this Sunday after church, we're going to take our pictures for the. And, you know, some of them looking back were just like, oh, gosh, they're like our worst family pictures. However, I would often during the week, I'd have it on my desk and I would just like turn and just go through those pages. And I would think about the names, I'd look at their faces and I would ask, do I know a little bit of their story? Do I know, do I, have I ever even said hi to them? And uh, so, you know, the idea of trying to get them, these are people committed to our church coming on a weekly basis. Um, you know, I'm supposed to, supposedly a, a pastor. Um, so just the idea of like praying for them, not that I would be, you know, on my knees praying for one family all night long or, but just the idea of keeping them in my mind as I would prepare the set list or even you're right. It did leak out when I would be writing a song at some point in the song, I would think, well, wait, is this something I could picture our people singing like the fifth row, the 10th row? Is this something I could picture them? Yeah. You know, different generations like singing along with, or is like, am I trying to do something too cool? Sometimes that would prevent me from like, yeah, all my music friends would do Dig that, but you know, I think that'll be a distraction for most people. So let's just bring it right here. This is going to feel better, and my music friends will won't be as impressed. But I think it will serve the church. It will help them worship God. So how do you build the tenderness? I would just say, you know, just praying for them. Um, if it, seeing it not as like a gig now for some people watching, maybe this is temporary, and you already feel like God's going to move you. <laughs> But while you are where you are, ask God to give you a heart for the people you serve. See them as individual people. Look at their faces. Think about, do I know a little bit about their story? And I think once you know a little bit about their story, man, you can't help but 
um, you know, you just go, wow, I can't believe they made it through that situation like that they went through. Or I can't believe this widow who's showing up in the second row after three years of what she just went through with her husband, finally, you know, the terminal cancer or whatever it is, right? Just mm -hmm. so many difficulties. And I just, um, that would really affect me when I stand up there and look around before we begin. Good morning. Hey, good morning, church. And I, just seeing faces, not like the countdown clock, three, two, one. <laughs> hey, what's up, church? Yes. You guys ready to worship? Yes. You know, just that sort of, <laughs> no, right. man, Sunday morning should just feel like a big living room, mm -hmm. no matter how big your church is. Yeah. And you're just like Uncle Paul or whatever your name in, fill in the blank, your aunt so-and-so, and have that sort of, think of your favorite aunt or uncle. When they saw you, they were like, hey, how are you doing? You know, like that sort of attitude. You felt like they cared mm. that you were loved. Um, how's your, you know, so I just felt like that's an important thing. I would remind our band when you pass people in the hallway, especially teenagers, get to know their names. Hey, Tony, how's it going? Hey, uh, you're tennis, right? Tennis guy. You're like a junior. I heard you're pretty good, right? How's it, how's it going? How's the, uh, what's it, you know, just being that kind of a, caring about people and then so i think that just leaks out and it'll it'll affect the way you lead worship yeah paul um yeah first off just thank you brother for the songs you've written um you're talking about your pastoral heart and i feel like so many of your songs um you know when 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 we sing them there's something of that heart, your, your deep affection for Christ. I mean, just, just being on this podcast with you and hearing your heart, um, is, is just a joy. Last night I was sitting with one of my sons who's 33 and he's, uh, he's one of my favorite worship leaders. And we, we started talking about the song, what can I do? Mm -hmm. Uh, and, and he was just saying, dad, we, we need to pull that song back in. He goes, that that song is timeless. Like it, it's just a great song. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, you gave your life away. I don't know how many times I've just encountered Jesus in a mm -hmm. in a beautiful way or uh, offering. You know, just my you know my life's an offering. Um, it, just yeah, so many songs and um, yeah. Thank yeah. you, thank you on behalf of of my family and, and me <laughs> personally. I told the guys. When we were starting today, I said I'm, I am definitely I have a man crush on Paul Belosh. Uh, I've, I've, I, 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 I've, I've purchased anything and everything you've ever oh, done. Yeah. Um, I don't, know, I don't know if you remember, but a couple of years ago, I was at Andrew Marcus's house and and we were writing a song together, and then he Facetimed you in or something, and and uh, I was like, yeah, I can't believe I'm in 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 a living room where Paul Belosh is on. Oh the, man, anytime. But anyways. That. Hey, um, I just wanted to like, just thinking about that pastoral thing and that whole, um, you know, your love for Jesus and your, there's, there's all these young people coming up and uh, mad chops and being musicians and, and there's just some real amazing gifting. Um, but then we're in a season two where we hear all the stuff about deconstructing and, mm -hmm. you know, but here's a guy, I'm looking at a guy right now that's just been faithful for all these years and uh and like my heart just gets so affected by that and when i think of the next generation and and that's that's so much of my heart as well how do i you know i'm definitely playing the back nine i'm 56 years old uh and and i just want to spend the rest of my ministry days training guys mm, and yeah. seeing uh, guys and gals uh you know become a paul balosh and for the next however many years the Lord would give them, they would be able to stand before him one day and say, I fought a good fight and hear mm -hmm. well done. Uh, mm -hmm. What would you say to that young gal or that young guy that's, that's just starting out right now? If, if you, if you had a couple minutes to say, mm -hmm. Hey, I, I would want to look them in the eyes and just say, this is what's, what's kept me all these years, just loving Jesus. I mean, you come across to me as a guy who loves Jesus now more than you did 10 years ago or, 15 years ago. And, uh, and that's, that's a wonderful thing. So what would you say to that young gal, that young guy, uh, that that's maybe just, you know, picked up the guitar and he's, he's yeah. leading on Sunday mornings, 
uh, just trying to figure it all out. But here's mm -hmm. a, here's a guy that's just done this and he's been faithful for all these years. What, mm -hmm. what, how would you encourage them? Interesting. The first thing that comes to mind, well, first of all, thank you, Pat, encouraged by all the things you said uh, before that real encouraged and thank you, God, uh, for, for the opportunities um, to, yeah, be part of those things that encouraged you. Um, what would I say? The first thing that comes to mind is find people who are a little bit older than you in your church, ideally, who you respect spiritually. There's something about their life that seems healthy and, and find a way to get around them. Don't be a pain in the neck, but you know, respect them, but maybe there's a way to hang with them. Oh, they go to the prayer meetings on Thursday night. Go to the prayer meeting on Thursday night. Listen to them pray. Like get around some older, more mature believers who you respect. And there might be some that you're turned off by. Mm -hmm. And it does hurt my soul that, yeah, the deconstruction thing. Mm -hmm. um, it just strikes me as people that have been hurt and wounded. And yeah. they, instead of just recognizing that people have hurt you, certain people, and not God, not Jesus. But, mm -hmm. you know, people, you will be hurt by people. If you're in relationship with people, there will come a time where, like, you're disappointed, you're let down, you're disillusioned. Yeah, right. Disillusion is not always terrible. Sometimes we're, right. we are, we're living under this illusion of how ministry should be. And sometimes we need a little bit of a disillusion. And the, the bottom line of just loving God and loving people when Jesus had to summarize it hmm. for, for his critics even, and uh, for even the Pharisees, you know, he basically is, it was like, basically, you know, all the commandments, you know them all, but basically they can be summed up with love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor hmm. as yourself. Well, let's start practicing hmm. on the people in our church. Practice, first of all, in your family. Mm -hmm. practice it's easy to say oh i love the world i love everyone i'm a christian well okay great well but let's start practicing right even picking up your cross daily meaning you don't always get your way meaning sometimes you humble yourself meaning you just mm -hmm. sometimes ouch that kind of hurts a little bit but let me take that back to the lord and process that through his grace and just make sure i don't like hold on to that hurt um so practice loving people and practice in your church. So I, again, I would say find some of those. Um, think of if you're a female, find a woman or two or three that there's just something about their life mm. that you're inspired by. Maybe tell them that at some point, you know, mm. catch them at a moment in church in a hallway and say, excuse me, when you have a second, I just, just want to say, I'm just so I see the way you are with your children or the way da da da. And I, if there's anything, I, I just love to spend time, but I don't want to be a pain in the neck. I could come to your house and help out with chores sometimes or, and grab a coffee with you if that would help or just anything. But I just, there's things I would just like to learn about. So, mm, and I'm pretty sure everybody listening to this right now can think of at least two or three people that you're like, uh-huh. Yeah, <laughs> man, that, I can think of a guy right now. Uh-huh. There's something about their life. And uh, yeah. So I would say you want to stay around people that are pursuing God. You don't want to get around complainers, and cynics and people that just are always complaining about this or the church or that, and this isn't good enough. And those people end up going nowhere. Right. You know, they're real good at tearing things down. Very few of them ever actually build anything. Hmm. If you notice. Yeah. So I'm still waiting for <laughs> the construction part. All right. A lot of deconstruction, please construct something that's healthy and like, that's amazing. Then maybe, maybe you'll have my ear. You'll catch my eye, but so far, I just see a lot of complaining mm -hmm. and uh, victimhood and feeling sorry for ourselves and pity parties. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's not the gospel. The gospel is to forgive the Lord's prayer. God, help me forgive those who have sinned against me. You know, forgive me of my sins, Lord, to the same mm -hmm. degree that I forgive those who have sinned against me. I mean, that's mm -hmm. the Jesus prayer. Are we ready to pray that and mean it? You know, we got to learn to forgive and let go and move on, man. Amen. Amen. <laughs> yeah. Hope that so was okay. Good. That was excellent. <laughs> Paul, I wish we had uh, hours with you and we respect your time and, and thank you for carving this time out of your schedule for us. We're really grateful for, for that. And I'm so encouraged as I hear your story because I, 
I hear your faithfulness over a lot of seasons, a lot of chapters, lots of ups and downs, and you're, you're a very gracious man. I know you've probably had lots of bumps on your journey, as we all have, uh, yeah. but you are still focused on Jesus. But beyond your faithfulness is the God who's faithful to you. And as you talk to us about, you know, your dad's in 240 and all God's particular providential uh, moments in your life, meeting people and landing you in different places, uh, it's him who's been behind your story. So we're encouraged by your story, but we're even more praising and rejoicing Mm -hmm. in God who's been behind you. And uh, you're not done and he's not done and he's not done with all of us. So I just want to thank you on behalf of uh, my brothers here and uh, those who are listening for your faithful journey. And we pray God's blessings on you and in whatever new adventures God has for you in, in uh, 2022, just around the corner. Mm. I think there's a lot more that we'd like to talk to you about in terms of your, your heart for songwriting and, and uh, the desire you have to equip the church in terms of putting praise and worship in their mouth. Uh, maybe it's all right if we could invite you to come back again and we'll continue on our, our conversation. Anytime. Would that be all right? Anytime. I'd love to. All right, brother. Anytime. Well, we sure appreciate you. And um, I'm going to ask Rob, uh, Rob, would you pray for uh, our brother? And uh, we'll just wrap up. Absolutely, Lord. We're just uh, just in amazement of how you weave the patterns of our lives together to your purposes. And uh, just thinking about the psalm that talks about how you know all of our days. And, and so we're thankful for the patterns of our lives, Lord, and how you use our frailty, our brokenness, our missteps for your glory and our good. And and I'm just thankful for Paul and the story of his life is that way, just in his brokenness and in the patterns of his life, Lord, you have used him powerfully um, beyond uh, anything he probably ever imagined. And, and it's all for your glory. And so we thank you for that. We thank you for him. We thank you for the ministry. And um, Lord, we just give you praise that you were so good. You were so merciful. You were so gracious towards us that you would use us. And so we thank you even just for this platform, for this opportunity to speak right into the ears and the heads of people who leave worship. And we pray that we use it for your glory. So we thank you for Paul, Lord. We thank you for this opportunity. And would you just bless us as we leave in Jesus' name? Amen. 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 Well, thanks everybody for watching today and for uh, listening in. God bless you in your ministries. And again, thanks co-hosts and thanks uh, brother Paul Balash. We'll look forward to seeing you guys again.